It would be appropriate to say that Lieji Matsumoto is the most important mangaka and contributor to anime you've never heard of, assuming you're from America like me. But that wouldn't exactly be true. You've heard the echoes of his impact on the genre reverberating across time since the moment you laid your eyes on the original Dragon Ball. You've seen his mechanical flair expertly scrawled and evolving across countless mecha show, and you felt the heartbreak of his tragedies every time your favorite side character bites the dust. Yeah, I know I went back to Dragon Ball, but can you blame me? Let's get this out of the way, all right? Akira Toriyama shares a name with Lieji Matsumoto. Both also wrote what would become anime adaptations of Journey to the West. So even if you've never watched Space Pirate Captain Harlock, Galaxy Express 3-9, or Space Battleship Yamato, a.k.a. Star Blazers, I can promise you that his ancestral DNA is helping design some part of your favorite anime or manga. Akira Matsumoto was born on January 25, 1938. Less than two years later, World War II would break out. His earliest memories are littered with moments of terror, fleeing from home after home, watching places he loved burn. This was a common experience for Japanese children of the era. It was also common for their fathers to be fighting off the Allied forces, and Matsumoto's father was no different. He commanded some of Japan's remaining military aircraft on the day the Yamato exploded, feeling the shockwave of its sinking blow from 30,000 feet. After the war, Matsumoto's father would never fly again. Life under the U.S. occupation was not easy, but it was undoubtedly formative for a young Akira. The comics dispersed of by U.S. soldiers fascinated the budding artist, but his interests weren't just limited to comics, as he also took a strong fondness to classical music, such as Richard Wagner's Ring Cycle. After a childhood of practice and inspiration, Matsumoto finally got his start by submitting his work to Manga Shonen's competition and winning at only 15 years old, resulting in his first published work in a magazine. This would result in work assigned to him by none other than the god of manga, Asumu Tezuka. While Tezuka would later recount this as an apprenticeship, Matsumoto would regard it more like contracted production work. With encouragement from his family and community who recognized his talent, he took a train to Tokyo at 18. This train ride would later inspire parts of Galaxy Express 3-9, as he looked out the windows of the locomotive up at the stars in the pitch-black darkness of Japan's countryside, imagining that he was traveling through space. Akira quickly developed close bonds with many mangaka of the time. The atmosphere, described by many, was extremely collaborative and excitable. Shitaro Ishinomori, famous for his own anime manga and, more specifically, Takusatsu, Alongside Tezuka and Matsumoto would describe themselves as Japan's top three animation maniacs. Akira would also become close with Monkey Punch and Chiba Tetsuya, who may have had strong influences on his later style shift in the late 60s, early 70s. All of them shared a love of cinema, which almost got them into trouble, as Tezuka would have to at one point explain to authorities that they were not, in fact, running an underground black market cinema but were simply organizing watch parties with close friends. Gathered around a projector in a dark room, the future of Japanese manga and anime absorbed all they could from a shrinking world in order to tell the stories that would motivate what would later be called the miracle economy for a rebounding nation. A love of film would send Matsumoto to a theater to see Marianne of My Youth around the age of 20. This film would have a lasting impact featuring the lovely Marianne Hold, she was a beauty who had helped to define the young artist's ideal woman for decades to come. Matsumoto's first published works of fiction consisted predominantly of shoujo, or girls' manga, as the market for such works was exploding at the time. This career move may have been responsible for him meeting, and later marrying, Miyako Maki, who had broken through in the genre and would go on to create the Japanese equivalent of Barbie, Lika-chan. It was at this time he gave up his birth name in exchange for Lieji. The implications of this change, literally, are deep enough to warrant their own video, but a main takeaway here is the implication of the zero man. Re, accounting for the L and R sounds interchangeability when romanizing Japanese, something that will come up later in the Lieji verse, means zero. And to Matsumoto, zero 
was an expression of infinite possibility. Science fiction works would slowly start to take over Liege Matsumoto's output as the 70s approached, thanks in part to a gig he picked up with Toshiba, creating the manga for Lightspeed Esper. The electronic manufacturer's mascot would indeed provide an opportunity for Leiji Matsumoto to dramatically shift his style. But the turn of the decade resulted in a slice of life work called Otoko Oiden, which fictionalized his own experiences as a young man in Tokyo. It was a breakthrough hit, a success that enabled Matsumoto to pursue opportunities that better suited his interest, namely aeronautics, with which he had shared a strong affinity with his younger brother Susumu. In departing for Japan, it was decided that the family's educational savings would be given to Susumu, who would go on to work as a space engineer. One of the sci-fi opportunities afforded to Leiji Matsumoto seemed fateful. Yoshinobu Nishizaki, a producer who had previously worked with Asumu Tezuka, wanted to create an anime about the Yamato, the same massive Japanese battleship Matsumoto's father flew over as it sank, signifying the end of World War II. In this series, though, it has been converted into a spaceship as a last resort against an oppressive alien force. Years earlier, Matsumoto's apartment neighbor handed him official, confidential blueprints for the actual Yamato. While the series' development and initial broadcast face many difficulties due to the scope of the show and its fearsome competition while airing side-by-side -side with Heidi Girl of the Alps, reruns perform strongly and resulted in a franchise consisting of three seasons and five movies worth of anime by the end of its original run. In the wake of difficulties working with Nishizaki, Leiji Matsumoto penned a manga called Space Pirate Captain Harlock. The character had originally been cut from the space battleship Yamato's anime. The Harlock anime would be produced by Toei, who he would help with Starzinger and Dangard Ace. The series would be directed by the company's rising star, director Rintaro. He would become synonymous with aesthetically experimental works over the next several decades. Matsumoto's next big hit, Galaxy Express 3-9, came to represent the precipice of Matsumoto's career and remains a cultural touchstone in Japan. The manga's volume stretches decades, and the anime went on for 113 episodes. Two movies would be created and directed by Rintaro. These theatrical works would mark a leveling up of overall quality in the animated movies of Toei. Indeed, the entire industry seemed to have a massive shift in their aspirations as the 80s continued, resulting in some of the most lauded artistic works ever. The universe Matsumoto created is generally known as the Liegeverse, and can often confuse fans due to the loose continuity created by its functional principle called Tokinowa, or Ring of Time, that allows for non-contiguous narratives featuring the same cast of characters who endure to the modern day. In 2003, Leiji Matsumoto's career saw renewed interest when he was credited on Daft Punk's Interstellar 5555, an anime space-slash-rock opera synced to their breakthrough album Discovery. The French house duo were lifelong fans of Matsumoto's sci-fantasy works, as were most children from their generation who had grown up watching dubbed episodes of Albator, their localized version of space pirate Captain Harlock. This resurgence in cultural relevance gave Matsumoto's career the final gust of energy it would need to serve his creativity for the next 20 years. But as in his manga, all good things must come to an end, sometimes even without a proper goodbye. Leiji Matsumoto suffered a stroke in Italy as he was touring Europe and visiting fans. A little over two years later, Matsumoto would be rushed to a hospital in Tokyo on February 12th, 2023. The next day, February 13th, Leiji Matsumoto would finally leave this world to begin his ultimate journey across the endless sea of stars. This video really only scratches the surface of the legend's career. Maybe someday we'll put it all together, or at least what we can find of it, into some mega documentary. But for now, I want to put together this little video essay to give everyone a crash course on what Matsumoto meant to manga and anime. His designs, his stories, his ideas, in part, gave Japanese children the dreams necessary to rebuild a weakened nation. For this, all anime and manga fans must give thanks to the master. Rest in peace, Leiji Matsumoto. Long live the Leijiverse.
Hey there, everybody. Captain Hardluck here, and I just want to make a really quick specific thank you to Darren John Ashmore and all the authors of his project, Lieji Matsumoto Essays on the Manga and Anime Legend. Oh, I got it. Uh, there's an affiliate link in the description below that supports this fan project and supports them. If you can't buy it, tell your local library to buy it. It is an educational book, and I want to thank them all again because this video would have been a lot harder to make. This fan project would be a lot harder to do without the information I've gotten from them. Uh, I just want to update everybody really quick. Uh, this video is probably going to be it for the next month or so, and then maybe we'll get a podcast recording in along the way. I'll keep you updated on social media, which should continue as normal. In the meantime, everybody, thank you so much for all the support you've shown the page, sharing it, and also I'm hoping that this has been a good experience for everybody to share and appreciate uh, Lieji Matsumoto in a difficult time and not to mourn, but to celebrate the life of an incredible, in invaluable, indispensable mangaka. Uh, we've grown and learned so much from him and by him. So let's keep that up. Lieji verse out.